one of the challenges that I, that I really found is that, oh my God, we've created so much content. How are we gonna get people to see it? I am at the LinkedIn headquarters in the Empire State Building, and I'm here with Tim Ellis, the CMO of the NFL. That's right, the National Football League. National Woo Football League, nice to be here. Yeah, nice to have you here, this Tim. It's great, yeah. Yeah, last time I saw you, we were in Con together, mm -hmm. and that was, what, June, and it's, yeah. it's September now. So, Tim Ellis, what's top of mind at the NFL? You know, one of the reflections I had when I first came on board was that, you know, we, we can't think of the marketing for the NFL as just being during the season or during mm -hmm. our big tentful events, is that we have to think about it year round. Mm -hmm. and we have to continue to build our audiences and we have to sort of find a way to engage people, particularly younger mm -hmm. people, throughout the year and to feed them content and to work with influencers and so forth to just keep it, keep the momentum going. And, yeah. And one of the things that I saw this year, which was super exciting, was that during the off season, somewhere around the summer, where we normally see a dip, right, in fandom, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we, we track fandom throughout mm -hmm. the year. We normally see a dip, and then it comes back up when the mm -hmm. season starts. Mm -hmm. We saw no dip, oh. right? So we saw it, we saw it continue, uh, sustained it, and then when the season started, it was a nice big uptick. So yeah. that's, that's important, and that was exciting. You were talking about all this cool thing, all the cool things that you're doing with social media and your right. ecosystem, 750 million, million people. Yeah, Tell me a little views. bit about what's going on there. Well, you know, I took a very close look at clo social media mm -hmm. and uh, the influencers. Mm -hmm. And I found that, you know, for the most part, we were really leveraging our own earned and own uh, channels. And they represent about 50 million people, which is pretty big. Yeah. You know, most companies would be very happy with mm -hmm. 50 million base. But then I said, well, let's, let's take a look at the players and let's look at the clubs and let's look at colleges and let's look at all these different you know, parts of the NFL ecosystem mm -hmm. and, and see what that might amount to. And before you know it, we were at about a count of 750 million. Wow. Right. So, you, so suddenly you begin to see the potential. If you can just find a way to tap into that and to build it and to leverage it and to mm -hmm. coordinate properly, um, it's, you know, it's unlimited potential, yeah. right? So that's what we have been doing. Uh, a big part of that is basically working with players as influencers. So a lot of what we've been doing is working with the players, understanding what are their interests and hobbies and so forth. And then we put them together with other influencers and then we serve them up content so they can use it on their, uh, on their own channels. Mm -hmm. And it's been very successful in building up their fan bases, right? Building up their audiences. You and actually the CMO of Snap, Kenny Mitchell, are both on our DNI Council. So yeah. first of all, thank you so much for, for being Absolutely. part of that. Absolutely, so important. Yeah. yeah, and you were talking about some cool things that you're doing with Snap. You want to talk about that? It's our hundredth season for mm -hmm. the NFL. If you didn't know that, so you know we have that beautiful hundredth logo in all of our stadiums and mm. you know in all the different areas where we have events. And so we've developed this AR technology together with Snap, or they developed, I can't say we did, but they developed it. You lock in on the app with mm -hmm. on, the, on that 100th logo, and then all we just unlock all this great content. Wow. And people are having a blast. You know, the, the amount of content that we have created is ridiculous for yeah. this 100th you know, anniversary. And so one of the challenges that I, that I really found is that, oh my God, we've created so much content how are we gonna get people to see it, right? I mean, like, it's, it's not just a matter of like sending them to one place to, to take a look at it. You really have to find opportunities to constantly feed it and to sort of get people engaged in it and talk about it in order to, to, to be successful. Yeah. Okay, so there's a lot in there, right? So there's teams, there's skills, there's technology, there's partners. Yeah. Like, how do, you, how do you actually think about your team in, in trying to put your arms around this content and get it out there in the right way? You know, the team, the marketing team, that's an interesting one. I, um, when mm -hmm. I saw, what the NFL had to do in terms of like, you know, engaging in some instances, even re-engaging certain parts of their audience. Um, I realized that, you know, building a modern marketing team today is not what it was even five years ago, right? Mm -hmm. I'm finding myself, I need experts in music, mm -hmm. right? I need experts in fashion. I need people who really understand the gaming world, mm -hmm. right, to bring them in. So it's different today. It's not just like getting that, you know, the, that person to, who has an MBA from Wharton to bring him in and maybe has some, some time working for P&G or some one of the other big, great brands. It's about understanding how to build all these strengths in order to be truly successful with a, um, you know, a wide breadth of your audience. And I wish I had more time to dig in with that and we're yeah. gonna come back to you soon. But before okay. we go, what is the best career tip you've ever received or given? Somebody told me when I, back in the early 90s when I was working for Goodby Silverstein, 
just really believing in the power of creative. Yes, of course you have to think about the business. You have to think about you know, your audiences and, and how to communicate to them. But you also have to think about what's gonna be best for the creative, mm -hmm. right? And that sometimes means you know, at the, at the idea stage, right? And, and how that comes to life. And is it really a good idea or you know, do you just need to put it aside and start all over again, which is sometimes very stressful. Particularly if you're on the account side. Yeah. If you're not a creative person, how do you really help? You have to really put yourself in the shoes of that creative person, understand their world, mm -hmm. and then do everything in your power to help that creative product. I thank you so much for stopping by. I know it's been a busy week here for you. Thank you so much for inviting me. I always, I always love this. Yeah. Fantastic. It was always fun to see you. And thank you all for tuning in to Top of Mind.